What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we've got some more Football Manager 24 content for you. I wondered what it might be like to put together a team of MLS All-Stars, per se, not the actual All-Star team, because that is too heavy loaded on number 10s and strikers and wingers and, and one poor defensive midfielder who has to play 90 minutes and do all the running for everybody else. No, this is a, a, a real-life team of MLS players and put them in the Premier League and see how it would go. So the premise here is that we're going to drop them in for Sheffield United. I could have cheated a little bit. I could have replaced a mid-table team like Wolves or Crystal Palace or somebody who wouldn't be in the relegation battle to give this squad the better chance. What we're going to do is we're going to end up simming the season five times. Um, I'm going to, like, I have to create the squad or whatever and put them in and then resign immediately and then hope that the team hires a good head coach and then go from there. So I'll kind of, oh, at the end of the video, we'll have kind of the results from all five seasons through the middle. We're just going to kind of play it out and, and, and see how it goes in, in terms of, of a little bit closer. I'm going to stop at every kind of 10 games or whatever and see how we're doing. And yeah, that's about it. Let's, let's, uh, let's pick the squad. The way we had to do this is I created a squad. I thought that'd be much more fun than, say, just putting all the MLS players on an existing team. So here we go. MLS United City FC. I, I tried to get in all of the, the new team names uh, over the years here recently with the expansion teams. Uh, we used the MLS logo as the crest. Um, and I spent probably too much time doing these kits because it's not like we're going to be seeing much of them. I'm just going to be looking at the standings as, as it goes by. But whatever. I, you know, please compliment me on, on the kits. I like them quite, quite a lot. Stadium name, which is called MLS HQ, and because we had to be in England, I had to pick an American-sounding city, so I just picked Jersey because of New Jersey, right? I've, you know, probably would have made more sense to New York instead of New York, but whatever. It's my save. It's my YouTube channel. I'm picking Jersey because let's go New Jersey. So in, in trying to put together this team, I knew it was going to be very, very difficult because there's going to be a ton of extremely talented number 10s and center forwards that are left off just because of the nature of MLS roster builds. All these teams spend their money at attacking midfield, striker, and winger, right? Like, so there's about 15 different options to play number 10. Um, but when you have, say, Messi, Thiago Almada, uh, and whoever else that we're going to pick that we'll let go, it's tough. That there, There's some, some omissions that I'm not proud of, but you had to build a team. I tried to have at least five U21 players. Um, probably could have done more just because uh, the registration rules in England is if, if you're under 21 or, you know, under 22, probably that you don't need to be registered, which helps with squad depth and everything. But I just kind of tried to bake those five into a squad of 25. First and foremost, obviously, you start with Lionel Messi. He's going to be our hope, our Lord and Savior and everything else. Um, and he's, you know, as far as he goes, is as far as we'll go. I went with Thiago Almada as what I expect to be our starting number 10 if, if we're looking at a 4-2-3-1. Luis Suarez is still rated extraordinarily high in football manager, so I'm bringing him along. I thought Cucho or Yorgos Yakamakis was going to be my starting center forward, but it, 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 it's going to end up being Suarez just because of, of his football manager rating. Um, and then Christian Benteke if we need an aerial threat off the bench. Danny Buanga, of course. Emil Forsberg can play centrally or on the wing. Hani Mukhtar can play centrally or, or up top. In the midfield, Sergio Busquets is also still very highly rated by this game, and his lack of pace is not something I think that's going to kill us, but hey, we'll see. Hector Herrera, Ricky Pooch in, in the midfield, Federico Redondo, um, very good to have him as, as one of those unregistered players. And Edward Leuven, as you'll see, he's also on the center back depth chart because in this game, they list him as, as a center back defensive mid central midfielder. So that versatility is going to be very good. The defense is obviously pretty dicey just again all the teams in MLS spend money in their attack rather than defense but central defense we have Miles Robinson, Matt Miazga, Walker Zimmerman and Tomas Aviles. Left back Jordi Alba, John Tolkien, Caleb Wiley, right back DeAndre Yedlin and Juan David Mosquera and in goal Berkey Blake and Chris Brady. Chris Brady obviously being um, U21. So this is what when I was building the team what I thought the depth chart is going to look like. Again I'm not going to be in control of the team. We'll see what the new manager picks, but this is what I think the team's going to look like. Some thoughts here is that Carlos Hill is rated much higher in this game than Joseph Pancil. That's kind of like why Pancil didn't make the team. I thought he'd make sense as the backup right winger to Messi and somebody who could add pace to this team. But like, again, hey, FM just has has different ratings for some guys, and that's fair. I, I You know, difference of opinions. So that's kind of where a couple of these decisions went. Again, like Suarez, I wasn't planning on taking because I didn't know what 
it was going to look like. And then he was obviously clearly the, the best option at center forward in MLS. And then he got to go on down the list. So anybody who's got left out, like Lucho Costa is not rated very highly. And he can't really play anywhere else in number 10 in this game. And when we have Thiago Amada, Emil Forsberg, Hani, Hani Mukhtar, and then obviously if Messi wants to play centrally, we're all good on number 10. So that's why the likes of of him. And, and we didn't want to pick Emmanuel Reynoso because I didn't want anybody to go AWOL. We're just worried about the locker room here. You know what I'm saying? So um, so this is the team. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how, the, how it looks. Here it is in, in NFM squad planner mode. Um, again, I just figured it's going to end up being a 4-2-3-1. Again, whatever manager comes in, they're going to have their own choice. As you see, it's July 3rd um, on this screen. Like... I'm pretty much going to get out of this and then um, resign. <laughs> so here's here's what this looks like. And here's the tactics view. Again, don't worry about the specific roles or, or tactics or settings. Again, I just figured as a 4-2-3-1, it'd make sense. But if you kind of look, like, Buwanga isn't rated so highly. Like, it kind of goes down the list. Like, Benteke, they gave him, like, two and a half stars or two stars out of this team. I thought he was going to be much more useful off the bench, but I could be wrong, apparently. Uh, Sergio Busquets is still rated extremely highly. Uh, Jordi Alba. So it looks like the the, the uh, Miami boys are, are going to be our... And one last look at the squad, uh, just in terms of what FM says about their current ability. Um, again, Messi, Suarez, Alba, Busquets are our four highly, most highly rated players. So shout out into Miami for carrying the way here. Um, and then, yeah, um, we're going to need good seasons from Miles Robinson, Walker Zimmerman. And it looks like Andre Blake is rated ahead of, of Roman Berkey, which is very surprising to me and something that I disagree with. But hey, FM's going to FM. That's all good. So, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see which player is going to step up. We'll see who gets the most playing time from, from this new coach, whoever it may be. All right, time to resign. Whew. All right, Ralph Hassett-Hodel takes the job. Um, don't know what that means for some of these older players because he's a pressing, Gigan pressing transition type of coach. And we're going to have a starting 11 that probably has, alongside Messi, it's going to be Suarez, Busquets, and Alba. Not exactly a Gigan pressing type of group, but hey, we'll see what uh, good old Ralph does. All right, one game in. Not great. Uh, they lost 2-1 at home to Aston Villa. They got kind of annihilated in possession and expected goals and everything else. Messi scored, of course, nice and early. Um, and let's see the, the squad that they picked. Suarez with Buanga, Almada, and Messi. Hector Herrera, Sergio Busquets. Yeah, that's exactly kind of. And Mosquera had a, yeah, uh, <clears throat> and Mosquera at right back, Blake in goal. A little bit surprising, but, you know, I get it. This is generally what I probably would have done, but, um, yeah. One more look at the club screen here. Uh, Ralph House and Huddle gave the captaincy to Hector Herrera and vice captaincy to Andre Blake. I thought for sure that was going to be messy, but hey, again, that that's that's their choice. It's not mine. All right, ten matches in, we are not in a relegation battle. Um, I also forgot that Everton and Nottingham Forest were going to have the points deductions, so they're probably going to be a little bit easier. But we can adjust. We'll figure it out at the end. Anyway, ten games in, eighth place for MLS United City FC. Lionel Messi tied for the Golden Boot race. Lionel Messi third in average rating, second in player of the match. Um, yeah, things things seem to be going well. Four wins, two draws. Uh, can I go to the full table here? Full table. Uh, an even goal difference with with a pretty bad defense for where they are, but not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Let's check out the stats. Let's see. Messi has started all eleven games, as has Thiago Amada. Miles Robinson, Andre Blake ahead of, of Roman Berkey. Hector Herrera, Sergio Busquets. Edward Leuven looks like he's playing <laughs> central defense here. That's interesting. Suarez suspended. It happens. Um, yeah, Hani Mukhtar with a few starts. Federico Redondo with 11 games off the bench. Still no appearances yet for Walker Zimmerman. Uh, Carlos Hill. So Messi has seven goals. Easily leading the team. I believe he has a bunch of penalties from just looking at Looking at the, uh, will it tell me? Four of his seven goals are penalties. Okay. Probably not sustainable, but hey, they're off to a good start. Can't blame them there. Let's see what's going to go happen. We are now at the halfway point of the season, and this is pretty nuts. Um, MLS United City FC are in fourth place. Fighting for a Champions League spot. They're not fighting for relegation. This is This is wild. Uh, maybe next next save I'll just do how is Inter Miami doing in MLS uh, in the Premier League. Um, Lionel Messi has to be somewhere here in the goals chart. Nine goals, so only two goals in the last ten games, and they're still getting results. Let's see what the stats look like. Or 
30 games in, so very far away from the relegation battle. MLS United City FC is sitting comfortable. Sixth place, challenging for European places. They could get in the top four, or they could finish 11th with Chelsea. That's This is nuts. Um, I really did not see this coming. I thought this was going to be much more, much closer to the uh, to the relegation battle. Haters are going to say this isn't real. Uh, just call me a shill. This is even after losing four games in a row with zero goals. I wonder if Messi was injured these games. Oh, Messi played. Messi played. They still couldn't score. Um, wow. So this could have been even better. Here we are. End of the season. The first one of this experiment. MLS United City FC comfortably mid-table on 48 points. The bottom absolutely fell out as the season went on. But that's okay. Um, just avoiding relegation I thought was going to be. Mid-table, I think, is a, is a, is a very respectable finish. Uh, ended up on negative eight goal difference, 55 goals conceded. Not surprising that the defense didn't quite hold up in this league. Ralph House and Huddle kept like look at look at the end of the season. Oh, it's that two wins from the last 12, 13. That's it's pretty tough. Um, let's check out the stats. Miles Robinson, Hector Herrera, Andre Blake played a bunch of games. Messi Messi had uh, 10 goals early in the season. I'm surprised at how slow he ended the season. But again, just finishing mid-table is really good. Messi going 7.5 on, on rating, like that's strong. Jordi Alba, thank God, uh, for a very good fullback in, in MLS, according to FM. Walker Zimmerman played more games than I, I think he than I thought he was going to. Juan David Mosquera. Um, yeah, look at this. This is this is pretty wild. I'm I, I still can't get over the fact that they finished mid-table. Um, based on the way that they ended the season, very, very poorly, I'm thinking that maybe this was an aberration. Like I said, I'm going to do this four more times. Um, I think it was more fun to just go through this first one and see, oh, look at me. I was joking about Wolves being a, a comfortable mid-table team and they got relegated. Everton, even with a six-point deduction, they, they finished high. Manchester City, champions, <laughs> can't stand them. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't happen again this year. But uh, anyway, this is, let's see, did, did we get anybody? Lionel Messi was the fourth highest rated player in this league, which is wild. Nobody else is close. I, think, I wonder what this team would have done without Messi. Um, assists, nobody's close. Yeah, they didn't. Um, I thought they were going to score more goals and concede more goals. But look, mid-table, 48 points after season one. Let's see what the next four look like. Oh, I forgot to save it at the beginning so I could just rerun this. Now I have to restart the whole save. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Auto save. Wiped it out after the second one. I gotta do this all over again. Oh. So after four sims of MLS United City FC, the MLS boys avoided relegation very comfortably every single time. 12th place, 13th, 13th, 11th. Uh, between 41 and 47 points, uh, respectable, not terrible goal difference, uh, or hovering around negative 10 each time. Surprisingly, there was quite a few FA Cup runs, a semifinal, two quarterfinalists. Um, unfortunately, they hired Ralph Hassenhutl after me every single time. I would have liked to see some variance just to see what would happen. Uh, but after that, it was a lot of predict predictability. Messi was the highest rated player every single time. Messi um, was in the mix for our leading scorer and leading assister every season. Uh, but Suarez and Cucho uh, were in there. Hector Herrera, Thiago Mata. Um, and then consistently, Andre Blake was always the starting goalkeeper over Roman Berkey, which I thought was interesting. I didn't love that DeAndre Yedlin wasn't registered any single time. Thank God Juan David Mosquera held up. Um, a couple times there, Pooch and Miazga. Mukhtar was another one left out. Benteke never got to play. One Yama never got to play uh, for the most part. Sorry, boys. It's just how it goes. I didn't make the decisions. Ralph Hasenhodl did. Don't blame me. So after those four, I wanted to do a fifth and take away the Miami players. Like Messi to the rescue, all this stuff. I get it. Like it, it's a whole other stratosphere. And FM still really highly rates Busquets, Alba, and Suarez as well. So I was curious. What would happen if we took out all the Miami players? Let's see what happened. All right, for this last one, after four straight successful seasons, I decided let's take out all the Miami guys. No Messi, no Busquets, no Suarez, no Redondo, no Tomas Aviles. And here we are, one game left in the season after simming it. A three-way tie for 17th and safety. Um, right now, MLS United City FC is in 19th and being relegated on goal difference only at the moment. But we go into uh, the final day of the season, and so you guys don't think that I'm safe coming, let's see what happens. 
All right, mark all is red, and here we go. No, it's 8 a.m. It's not game time yet. <laughs> and would you look at that. On the final day of the season, MLS United City FC, without the Miami boys, the Barcelona boys, avoid relegation from the Premier League. Let's check out on the squad stuff. Uh, any transfers? Nope. Nope. Let's see. Mosquera, Cucho, Hector Herrera led the team in appearances. Andre Blake, Buanga, Bernadeschi, a new addition to this team. Kai Wagner, a new addition to this team. 11 goals from Cujo to lead the team. That's not a ton. Thiago Almada. Peter Musa had eight goals and only started three games. That that feels like uh, an issue that they didn't start him. Buanga, Bernadeschi, Hani leading in assists. Thiago is a very, a very uh, even-keeled squad. Ricky Pooch was not registered, so he only played in one game. Don't worry about him. So he's Hani Mukhtar, Buanga, Federico, Bernadeschi, our top performers. Wow, just look at that. They don't need the Miami boys. What can you tell me? What can you tell me? 4 2 3 1. I assume that they went Gigan pressing again with Hassan Hoodle. I still am very curious that Berkey has never started in any of these, but that's all right. Wow, look at that. What, a, what an experiment. Like I said, another uh, avoiding of relegation. This one was much, much tighter. It came down to the last day of the season. Uh, very exciting. Very interesting. Um, again, Buanga and Mukhtar are the highest rated players without the Messi boys. Cucho, the leading scorer. Buanga and Bernadeschi, five assists each. Mosquera and Cucho uh, were our leading appearances. Lucho Costa, I tried to bring in. Cesar Rajo, I tried to bring in. Uh, you were not registered. Same thing with Pooch. And Yevlin, once again. Yet Poor Yevlin can't, can't get in the game. What did we learn? Nothing, really. I learned that this was a fun way to spend a morning here on Football Manager. Um, maybe I'll do a save of just one MLS team or just Miami or something like that. If this video has enough interest and if you guys want me to. Maybe I'll play through a save with an MLS team in England. I, I've been kind of looking forward to that. Like I said, the last couple MLS, the, the NYCFC save that I did uh, by episode two or three, there wasn't a ton of viewers. So I don't want to give you guys shit that you don't really want. Uh, but hey, we'll see. Um, yeah, I thought I had a lot of fun here. I think that this, you know, your snobs are going to say that I'm a shill, <laughs> that I rigged it, uh, but I didn't. Um, this was uh, this was fun. This was interesting. I hope you guys found a little bit of use for it too.